certainly been kind to us. You can see in the background that we've got fabulous weather for what promises to be a fantastic competition. For a long time now, we've waited to see the European Sidecar Championships competed in England. And this year, we're pleased to say that they've attracted a fantastic entry. We're here at Tunbridge, of course, this fabulous action track, as it's like to be known. The European Sidecar semi-final. It promises to be a fabulous event. We've not just got the British in mind, because we've got Paul Miller here and we've got Brian Palmer. In addition, we have got no less than three sidecar drivers that have won the European Championships. The very quick Jacques Leduc from France, Marco Glory from Holland, and of course those very, very quick Germans, including the reigning champion, Carl Kill. That's fantastic in itself, the European sidecar semi-final, an event to look forward to. But of course, Tunbridge aren't just happy with that, they've got to support it with a fantastic other event. For three years now, we haven't seen the Battle of Britain. It's been cancelled due to check preparation for bigger events such as the Masters, etc. But now, in 1996, the Battle of Britain returns, and we've got a fantastic lineup of solos. It's possible that any one of ten at least could win it. The 1,000cc right-hand sidecars that always impress our German colleagues, they're here in strength as well. It promises to be a great meeting. The Battle of Britain for 1996, supporting the European Sidecar Semi-Final. A fantastic meeting in prospect. Well, as always, there are so many people that I could talk to in the pit, so I think we'll concentrate on the European Sidecars. And, of course, a great occasion, really, for the British crowd. Paul Miller, something that they're all going to be looking forward to. Yeah, most definitely. I think today is going to open a few people's eyes to see just how quick the foreigners are and what we're up against, really. And uh, we've got a work cut out today, but as usual, you can guarantee 100% from us. And uh, I've got a new passenger today, Dave Collin, and, and we got on really well in time training yesterday. Uh, we won one of the time trainings. So, um, you know, we're confident we're going to qualify. I mean, that's what we're here for, make the final, and that's what we're going to go for. The target, of course, being that big final over in uh, Enerham on the 18th of August. It's got to be the target of everybody here today, but also I think in front of your home crowd, you want to put on a good performance, surely. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got the home supporters. I mean, I don't know how many of you here today. I'd have thought, you know, three, 4,000 people. And there's just myself and Raz, you know, and hopefully they'll all be cheering us on. And uh, you can guarantee, you know, we're giving value for their money, that's for sure. Oh, excellent. We wish you the best of luck, Paul, and we hope we are in that qualifying, of course, in that final. All right, thank you, Jim. Thank you. It's a nice track, and uh, yes, we were talking a lot about England, and uh, but we have seen the track, and we're really happy with that. We have to find our way through it, but I think it's for everybody the same, so we get to enjoy now, it. Of course, you are a, a very experienced rider in this form of motorcycle racing, and I think, I've got to ask really, do you think that our style of track alters any different from the tracks you're used to riding on? No, not this one, because uh, we drive a lot in Germany and in France, and it's uh, quite the same. And that's, that we are really happy about that, because then we know what is going on on the track, so... It should be no bad deal. That's excellent. And Harry, a quick word with you. Obviously an experienced passenger. You enjoyed practice yesterday? Yes, this was very well. It took the riding and, and the practice was very good for us. And we, think, and we hope that we will be the first six <laughs> for the final. Well, of course, that's important. As a lot of the riders have said, it's getting to that final that's important. But I'm sure that when we do see that final at the end of the day, it will be a race that everybody will want to win. Yeah, to win, okay, but uh, our first problem is to get this point to get to the first six. That we, because we got the final this year in Germany for the Europe. Uh, in, in Holland, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. And Holland gives us a little bit more to uh, go quicker, I think, because all the people. So our first problem is to get close to the six. And every in the final today, in the end final, we give everything what we got, but not that we make any that there's a crash possible. So. No, oh, excellent indeed. Of course, everybody's priority to get to that final. Marco, Harry, we wish you the very best of luck. I know the British crowd are looking forward to it. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. thank you. Well, of course, I think the language problem is going to be a bit difficult, but we had to have an attempt at speaking to one or two of the German competitors. And with me, Thomas Kuhn, a very, very quick sidecar driver from Germany. Thomas, your thoughts on our track here? It's, uh, I'm not understanding. <laughs> Come on, yeah. See, I knew we were going to struggle with this one, and of course um, the viewing public are going to enjoy this one, aren't they? But, um, I mean, really what we're trying to get is a thought of our track compared to the tracks that you would normally ride on. Mm -hmm. 
Ja, ein großer Unterschied ist eigentlich zwischen den Strecken nicht. In England ist das alles so viel professioneller wie in Deutschland, muss ich ehrlich sagen. Gefällt uns sehr gut und die Strecke an und für sich ist sehr gut. And this is where I should break into German and obviously be able to answer him, isn't it? But I think what I will do is take a liberty here and have a quick word with his interpreter because obviously you, you go with Thomas regularly, do you? He's struggling to hear me as well now. You travel with Thomas regularly for your racing. I travel with Thomas into the races in the other countries, not in Germany. So a little bit dolmetsching in English. We make also the, the engine for Thomas. And Thomas is very happy with his practice here yesterday. Oh, yesterday the practice was not so good for us. We had problems with the ignition and with the spark plug. And we hope today it's always ready that we can... Uh, we, we hope we can win this race. Well, of course, the British crowd are very pleased to see this action. As you can hear, practice has already started. I'll leave you to it. The very best of luck, Thomas. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. The superb lineup for the Battle of Britain this afternoon. There's many riders I could have a word with, but interested to see that Paul Hurry, you're riding again back from injury. Um, yeah, the, the leg felt okay um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday on the road speedway. Um, so I thought well, I'd give it a go and see how it is today. Um, but if it gets too bad, then I should pull out because I've got me long tracks on me next weekend. I don't really want to jeopardise that just for the sake of a, a little meeting, really. <laughs> Well, no, I think all of us would totally agree with that, but uh, it is nice to see you back out there. And Tunbridge looking superb, as always. Pretty good. Uh, I think I have a bit of a problem with like the hot weather and the watering, um, but I'd like to get over that, and they normally do quite a good job, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. Paul, it's great to see you back out there again, and we do wish you the best of luck for next weekend. Thanks very much. Goes without saying that one rider that's travelled probably the farthest to get here is all the way from Australia. Chris Watson, fabulous to see you. Yeah, it's good to be here. Um, we rode at Leon last night and we drove all night to be here so a um, bit of practice for the long track and uh, hope to have a good day. Well indeed and if my memory serves me correctly this is not the first time you've been to Tunbridge is it? Um, third time actually, I rode twice here in 86 and uh, been a long time between drinks so hopefully a good day today. <laughs> well fingers crossed, I know you've been out for practice, what do you think of the track? Yeah it was quite good actually, Like, um, it's not as quite as grass as uh, last time I rode it and uh, probably a bit more Australian way inclined to racing, uh, just dirt. So I'm sure there's a couple of fast ones, Steve Schofield, Paul Hurry. So I think if I make the final and do a half a ride, I'll be happy. <laughs> well, indeed. How long is this trip? That I know it's geared around the long track that you've qualified for, but you're doing other meetings in the UK, aren't you? Uh, no, actually, Mariansky got semi-finals next weekend, and uh, we pop go home the Tuesday after that, so if you qualify, we'll come back later. Well, indeed, let's hope you do, and I'll wish you the best of luck this afternoon, Chris. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks very much. Right, we still have a terrific ride at the qualifier just a, a week or so ago. Scott Nichols, fabulous ride that weekend. How does it compare with Tunbridge? Well, the track's a lot bigger. It's usually like a billiard table here, but it seems to be a few ruts here today, but it was a lot cooler at Wainfleet. It's too hot today. <laughs> well, of course, there's a fabulous class of entry here as well, isn't there? I mean, it's going to be tough competition today. Yeah, it's a good line-up. We didn't expect it to be this good. I thought I might better get some prize money, but <laughs> looks like there's a better field than I expected, so it'll be a good meeting, I reckon. Oh, I think it's uh, lined up to be a fantastic meeting, and uh, I think, Scott, if you can keep the performances up like we've seen over the last few weeks, you're going to be in there amongst them. Yeah, I like to hope so. I mean, I just go out and do my best in every race. I mean, you can only do your best, so if that's good enough, then hopefully I'll have a good day. Super. We wish you the best of luck, and hopefully see you in that final. Cheers, thanks a lot. I say that the sidecar competition in 1000cc right-hand sidecars is very, very open this afternoon. But watching practice, Mark Edwards, that looked very quick. Uh, it's not as quick as I wanted. Can't get the gear in right, but hopefully we'll get it sorted. And I think it's fair to say that you enjoy riding here at Tunbridge? I think everybody does to a certain extent. It's just, like I say, I suppose it always makes it better if you do well, doesn't it? And we haven't here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure that day's going to come, and Nick, obviously, uh, going through my mind, is it doesn't seem as if we've had too many meetings so far, does it? No, not after the uh, Burks. We've missed out on quite a few, so uh, hopefully we make a comeback and uh, sort of finish off as we we'll start as we mean to go on, really, I should say. We've not really had a good meeting yet, so hopefully this is going to be the one local one for me, so means a lot, really. Excellent. Of course, I think everybody's going to be suffering with the weather this afternoon, but not forgetting, two weeks' time, we start the rollout for the British Masters. Do you think you're ready for it yet? Yeah, as long as my wrist holds up, it'll be right. <laughs> well, of course, I should touch on that, shouldn't I, that uh, you picked up that injury at the Barks. And uh, physically, 100%? 
Yeah, I've had it out a cut plaster off three weeks early. And I've been in Dead Sea Hospital and it bone welded as they call it, it's just like a laser. Yeah. Um it's not aching too much, it'll be alright I think. That's excellent, Mark. I know there's a lot of people in the crowd who'll be very pleased to see you out there. Let's hope you get that gearing sorted and the best of luck. Thanks very much. Cheers, Jim. And as they come round, Colin L, the very colourful Colin L, leading them past me. As we start to pick up the rest of them for you as they come down, I'm sure that uh, we've seen plenty of screaming shouting on the far side from the Cornwall contingent. Gary Log riding number seven this afternoon, accompanied by number 37, Roger Log. Number 72 is our reserve that's coming in. You may not have in your programmes, Kevin Teager. 169, James Cawthoray. And I think as they come round past you, those of you that are experienced enough to go to many, many glass tracks throughout the year will appreciate the uh, terrific entry we've got here. Chris Watson all the way up from Australia with Steve Schofield there. Number 25, Jason Breen. And number 83, Phil Ashcroft. Quick word there of the Australia long tracker. Chris Watson has been here before. Some of you can remember events back in the 80s. Some of our Dutch competitors coming to the UK for this type of event. Number 30, Malcolm Simmons, of course. Number 76, the youngsters qualified through for the Masters, Tony Dart. Number 17 is Tony Reynolds. I'm looking for number 8 there, Gary Reynolds. Uh, number 3, Chris Tritton. Both those two had terrific rides in that national qualifier. And great to see you back out there again, number 86, Paul Hurry. And about this part of the country, I'm sure, will have a lot of support. Well, number 55, we get used to seeing him ride that number. That is, of course, the Exodus Freeway rider, Paul Fry. And local hero, I think it's easy for me to say, number 5, Trevor Banks. Number 19 is Trevor Eden. As we now start to see the lineup of 1,000cc sidecars. One very, very quick crew is, of course, number 23. Doing a little practice start there for me, Gary Jackson and the passenger Mick Stays. We seem to expect so much from that crew nowadays. We know that outfit is extremely quick. One outfit that we're going very, very quick in practice. That's number eight, Mark Edwards and Nick Walters. Number three, Alan and John Blewett, the crew back together again and nice to see. 101 is Gavin Newlin and Simon Wall. Very easy to spot, of course. The Winderburns, Rod and Chris Winderburn, number 148, going very quickly in practice. Number 184 is John Hiscock and Matt Sleep. Number five, Mick Cave and Tony Baysby. Number 15, that very distinctive outfit of Ivor Matthews and today passengered by Ian Weatherly. Number 74 is Duncan Tolhurst and Bull Baysby. Number two, of course, the very, very experienced Steve Smith with Pastor Dave French. Number 24 is Rob Wilson and Tony Miles, and a little bit of history for you. The last time that the Battle of Britain was run, Rob Wilson and Vince Jones, it was then, did take the sidecar trophy. Number 17 is Dave Steer and passenger Andy Orchard. As we see the last uh, coming round, of course, the European crews will be lining up in the centre green to be introduced to our officials. As we see coming past me, the last of the 1,000cc competitors. Number 12 is Tim Bennett and Steve Hargreaves. And number 13 with a few extra crew members, that is John Halsey and Jason Glenny. So indeed, that looks as if that's going to be all the national competitors that have come round. It leaves us just to say that we now can introduce to you the European sidecar crews who, as I mentioned, are going to line up on the centre green. There always had to be one, didn't there? One crew that would decide to stay with the European boys. And now we know that he's been over to Germany showing them uh, what 1000cc sidecar racing is all about, but uh, Roger, you should have been with the national runners. So indeed, as we see our European competitors starting to line up in front of me, I do will hand you over to our man on the centre green, Tony Noll. Oh, sorry, now we want them over here because these are the guys who in fact are responsible for getting this particular show on the road as they are for all Tunbridge events. So we've asked uh, Renzo Giannini, if he would be so kind as to 
make a small presentation to each of these three, and he's ready to go. Gentlemen, could you come and join us, please? <laughs> he's insisting they go in line, as of course he should. No. May I go? You may. Mr. Ray Palmer is the first one. Yes, thank you. Mr. Tom Penfold. And Mr. Steve Dempsey. Those of us that they would not happen without these three guys, and we thought we'd embarrass them today. Right, let's work our way through the crews then. The first crew we come to are from Britain, Alan Peck and Grace Hager. Also alongside, also from Britain, the British champion Paul Miller with Dave Collin in the chair on this occasion. And next, from Sweden, Robert Abramson and Mikhail Larsson. And that's in number six, Carl Kiel and Jürgen Reed from Germany. Former Vice European champion. Good luck. Good luck. And then, also from Germany, outfit number three, Martin Brendel and Hermann Brendel. The best, yes. And number eight, from Great Britain, the most consistent driver in the Olympic Party this year, Brian Palmer, of course, passing to Danny Hall. Oh, you are very popular, yeah. Thank you. Alongside, from Norway, Kurt Lund and Sean Bosch. And from Holland, former champions Marco Flori and Harry Drent. All the best. We need you and all the six. We'll do our best. And also from Holland, Gerben Schumer and Richard Marl. Alright, I'll do it for you. Send you. Alongside, from France, Jacques Leduc and Michel Gauthier. Congratulations. Jacques was in great form yesterday. Alongside, also from France, Bruno Le Glise and Alain Lamont. Pour la France, pour la Patrie. And alongside, the reigning European champions from Germany, Thomas Cunard with Marco Hunsrucker in the chair. Thank you very much. Last man, also from Britain, Richard Pickett and Scott Dunn. Very famous name. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, those are your competitors. Several times you have been champions as well. They great at in this competition. We hope they have a safe and very enjoyable afternoon to race with us. Thank you. 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 Thank
see the checkered flag this time as they come towards us and as they come to us it is indeed a win for Dave Sarah. 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 A win for Alfred number 17, Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. In second place, number three, Alan and John Blewett. In third place, 101, Gavin Newlin and Simon Waugh. In fourth place, number 12, Tim Bennett and Steve Hargreaves. Fifth place, to Alfred and number two, Steve Smith and Dave French. And no sixth finisher there, the winning time, 143.18. 143.18, that equates to a speed of 53.41. Thank you. 
it back a little bit again. It looks as though he may well have a problem because he just doesn't seem to be coming out of the gate well, but he's the drop there, so maybe he's got a mechanical problem. Yeah, that's it. Oh,
Right, you can put these into the chart, of course, in the middle of the uh, program, so as you can keep track of the position. Five points for outfit number six, Carl Keel and Joachim Rieg, the winners. In second place, number ten, and four points for Jacques Leduc and Michael Gorget. In third place, and three points for outfit number two, Marco Gorey and Harry Drent. In fourth place, outfit number three, Martin Ruddle and Herman Ruddle. In fifth place, outfit number seven, Gerben Schulman and Richard Moore on one point, and no points for outfit number 11, Bruno Leglise and Alain Lamont. Simmons. In fourth place, number 71, Peter Reed. 
In fifth place, number 25, Jason Prem. In sixth place, number three, Chris Trenton. In seventh place, number 72, Kevin Teague. In eighth place, number 83, Phil Ashbrock. In ninth place, number 17, Followed by number 174, we weren't expecting Tony Reynolds to be out in that one and finish in ninth place. In tenth place, Robin Pilcher. When it's time, 1 minute 21.32, 1 minute 21.32, a speed of 59.80. Oh.